The Pro Tour may be over, but that doesn't mean the big tournaments are. We had a bunch of regionals and regional championship qualifiers this weekend, and even though the Pro Tour tends to kind of lock in the meta, there were still some brave souls out there bringing brand new lists to these events. So, let's get to it, everybody. What's up, Wizards? Dev from the place. Top three new decks of the week. Let's go. And I'm your favorite magic channel, favorite magic channel. Best believe that the professor go bananas for my deck tech. Ooh, show me some new decks. I, I want to see some new decks. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently that's as much bass as I can put in my voice at one time. Yeah, something like that. But anyway, what's this first thing we're looking at here? This is Gruel Counters, or so it is dubbed by its pilot this weekend. Best Smurg in A, or at least I think that's how you're supposed to pronounce their name. I'm sorry if I butcher anyone's in this video or any other videos, but still. This is the first deck we're looking at because it's not necessarily the most successful, but pretty good winning record here, 9-4 and four at the Montreal, or Montreal up there in Canada. It's a good place to live. Um, up at the Montreal Regional Championships, 9-4 and four was good enough for 26th place, so top 32. Decent winning record there. Not a bad deck. What is this actually? We still haven't actually told you what the deck is. It's kind of standard hardened scales. Bear with me. Now what I mean is that this is a 4 Ozolith deck. You just don't see those every single day in case you haven't seen this in a while. It's a 2 mana legendary artifact. Doesn't matter that it's legendary, you can cycle it away for 2 mana and... It's hardened scales. Again, if one or more plus one plus one counters be put on an artifact or creature you control, that many plus one plus one plus one counters are plus one put on it in plus one stead. So, again, you just get extra plus one plus one counters whenever you do that. So, it works really well with stuff like Teething Wormlet. You go turn one Wormlet into turn two Ozolith. That's a bunch of counters on your Wormlet, too, to be exact. But, you know, over the course of the game, it's a lot more counters than that. But you've also got Iron Apprentice. In case you don't remember this guy, it's just a one mana one one because because he comes into play with a plus one, plus one counter on it. If he dies, he can just move his counters to other stuff. So he's going to get counters throughout the game. All of those counters will go to something else. That's pretty sweet. You put counters on your Ginger Brute, and you get in unblockable mostly. You got Kyrion Beast Caller in here. This could counters whenever creatures come into play. Uh, or whenever you cast a creature spell, rather. And then when it dies, you can move its counters as well. There's also Gold Vein Hydra, the newest card in the deck. This gets a bunch of counters when it comes into play. He's got a Vigilance and a Trample and a Haze. A lot of good keyword abilities. So it's cool that it's here as a full four of, by the way. But I think the actual, like, real sauce in this deck is <laughs> Agatha's Soul Cauldron. Right? You, you know it. You love it. Maybe not, but there's also Voldar and Thrillseeker, right? The old one-two punch, you know? I get the Soul Cauldron. Can basically give any creature with a plus one, plus one counter on it the Voldar and Thrillseeker ability to, like, sacrifice it and deal damage to equal to its power to anything. So you can just fling any of your guys with a plus one, plus one counter on them, which is more or less all your guys, and just end the game that way if you can't get through for combat damage. But this deck can get through for combat damage a good bit. You know, again, Ginger Brute, Unblocked, to carry on Beast Call, your worm. Wormlet can both get relatively big. Gold Vein can come down, get big. Sir Ginger, you're sacking artifacts. And artifacts going to the yard. She's getting big. Ozolith is out. All your guys are getting relatively large. You got an NT out, right? All your guys are getting pretty big because, you know, you get extra counters from Ozolith on that again. Ozolith and um, Agatha Soul Cauldron also go really well together because basically you get two plus one plus one counters whenever you activate Cauldron. So really cool deck we keep seeing these kind of like simic cookies decks with uh, zoetic glyph and sometimes case of the filched falcon and sometimes uh, spyglass siren you know very often these decks are blue green and you know the reason you want to include blue cards are pretty obvious but now we see voldaren thrill seeker is actually I think, the actual reason why you want to play this deck in the first place and Again, it's got like multiple game plans. I like that. It can play around in the opponent's yard. There's multiple reasons you want to do that nowadays. Creatures like Ginger Brood are nice little like kind of reachy things in the late game if you can activate his ability and get him kind of big. But he's also great in the early game. So are most of these creatures. The curve is relatively low in this deck. But, you know, <laughs> you got a Gold Vein Hydra in your hand. Sometimes you can slow, slam that down for like four or five points. So... I don't know. Altogether, I think this is really sweet. And obviously, the Gold Vein Hydra of Voldar and Thrill Seeker Agatha Soul Cauldron Synergy isn't lost on me either. It's basically make your own fireball, which is very sexy in my estimation. So really, really, really cool deck here. Honestly, it was kind of a green and really gruel kind of weekend. There's green in just about every deck that I want to look at today. I say just about. 
rephrasing that, there's green in every deck I want to look at today. So let's bounce over to the standard challenge. And there's two of these over the weekend, standard challenge 32, standard challenge 64. And both of them feature Golgari decks that I kind of want to talk about for a second. But I think one is more interesting than the other because one is basically Golgari midrange. They took out Deep Cavern Bat and they put in Caustic Bronco. And they've kept the curve relatively low, and I think it's actually a cool build, but the much more interesting of the two builds, and the one that plays the more new cards, the, yeah, the most new cards, is this one right here, Golgari Crimes, I guess you want to call it. I forgot this user's name, and I want to apologize for that. Tulio Haughty, or Jody over here, at third place. That is not bad. They are surrounded entirely in this field by you know blue white control decks and stuff like that so really interesting that this gets not only the top eight but third place heck of a performance by tulio and miguel miguel and tulio it is a reference to the movie el dorado it's a it's a good movie people should go it's a i think it gets a lot of crap but honestly it's a very good movie i gotta stop talking about it though either way this is a uh, green black crimes again for lack of a better term uh free strider lookout is in here this is a really really cool ramp piece in case you haven't seen it yet whenever you commit a crime you look at the top five of your library put a land onto the battlefield tap the rest go on the bottom and this only triggers once per turn really really sweet ramp piece that can kind of ramp more than once in the same turn cycle right because you commit a crime on your turn on your opponent's turn that's two lands son what are we doing with all the lands in this deck actually not a whole lot this is not necessarily a ramp deck it does have stuff to do with all of that big mana right we've got one copy of outrageous robbery i should move my dumb head we've got one copy of outrageous robbery in this deck so that's kind of a mana sink for us if that's what we want a copy of march of wretched sorrow so again if we do get a lot of lands because of lookout then we do have ways of dumping that mana. i like that a good bit but there's also free strider look or excuse me a jisa the hellraiser in here jisa's really really sweet man we we commit a lot of crimes we'll get into how in just a moment but Gisa making these um, zombies sometimes she often i'll even say she only has to make one round of zombies to um, really pay off, you know what I mean? <laughs> like Just six power in zombies, plus the Gisa is ten total power if you're able to commit a crime once you get this. So, you know, even if you only ever get like a pair of zombies, that's usually enough to put the game away. It's a very, very powerful card, and I'm surprised we're not seeing it in more builds instead of Aklazots. I'm not saying it's better than Aklazots. They're very, very different cards for very different decks some of the time, but... As five drops go, I think that Aklazots is one of the reasons this isn't seeing as much play, but I think more people should try it. It's a very, very good magic card. As far as committing crimes, we've got uh, Graveyard Trespasser, which does so for free whenever it attacks. Hostile Investigator comes into play and commits a crime. This is seeing a little bit more play over these last couple of weeks. We first saw it kind of peek its head in the door during Pro Tour. It was in sideboards and stuff, but um, here we see it in the main deck as a two of and I think that's really interesting. This is a cool card from the big score, and it doesn't look like much when you first read it, but all this value is kind of a lot uh, once you actually play with the card. There's also uh, Kervik the Punisher. This cares about us committing crimes as well and can cast um, cards out of our graveyard whenever we commit crimes. You do still have to pay the mana for them. But um, in my experience, at least with the card, because I've been playing like mono black crimes, in my experience with the card lately, uh, the card, it's just it's, if it's left out for a turn and you have you know, a removal spell in your hand, then it's the best card in your deck. There's other turns where it's really bad. It's just like a three mana three three that sits there and can't even attack or block effectively. But you know, if it gets like an open lane <laughs> and a couple of mana to work with, then you can do a lot of damage with Kyrbeck. There's also Shelter the Apocalypse, because why not? We're kind of a little bit of Legends deck. You see the tiny bones joins up in here, but I believe there's only like six total legends in the deck. I mean the good thing is though that this will um commit a crime. Um, not only when it comes into play, yeah, any number of target players, I had to make extra sure on that, but whenever you commit or whenever you um, play a legend, it just automatically commits a crime for you. So like Gisa will trigger herself. Karavik will trigger himself on uh, later turns and you have the mana to actually use, you know, a spell out of your yard or whatever. So it's pretty cool for Gisa to come down and immediately get you the zombies. So I can see why there's a couple of copies of this thing in the deck. 
Aside from that, though, just, you know, good old-fashioned removal to cut down for Gopher, to Long Goodbye, a March, like we've already said, and then to Urgent Necropsy in the deck as well, because, again, we're, you know, committing a lot of crimes. We're throwing a lot of cards in our yard by using single-target removal and stuff like that. So we can definitely collect enough evidence to hit a couple of different permanents with this, and this is also committing a crime. I mean, I imagine that if you have a Gisa out and you take out their two most important permanents with Necropsy and get two zombies, you just win the game. So... Really, really neat. The deck also, for whatever reason, plays Sunken Citadel in here. You can activate the abilities of land sources. So that'll help you activate your Murex, your Field of Ruin, your Demolition Field. That's, you know, I guess that's neat. Your Dross Pits, your Restless Cottage. <laughs> really need to have four of these in the deck for, you know, land purposes. There's also two um, pre-boarded Duress, which is kind of an interesting call. And then two Cease and Desist. Also, in the main, you can target your opponent with this, so the first half of it is a crime. You can also gain the two life and draw a card, which is actually not too bad. Um, it's kind of like Revitalize, but, you know, two-thirds of Revitalize in terms of the life you gain. But really, you just care about the card. It's cool that it's instant speed. And then Desist, all right, you know, destroy all artifacts and enchantments. is good against a number of decks right now, because there's a few that you might catch two or three enchantments on the table, and obviously... There's the sort of, you know, Azorius Artifacts deck with um, Synthesizer. So, cool little choice here. I think Cease and Desist is probably better than it looks. So, I don't know. You just haven't... I feel like Golgari has kind of gone down in terms of meta share dramatically in the last couple of weeks. And especially since the Pro Tour, where it really didn't have a great showing and not too many people showed up on it in the first place. So, it's good to see people innovating on Golgari. Not only this deck, but I previously mentioned this one too, the Caustic Bronco deck. You know, two Archfiend of the Dross in here with the Caustic Bronco. You've got Glissa, Graveyard Trespasser, Kyrevek, Mosswood Dread Knight. You know what all of these things do? They saddle Bronco. You need three power or toughness to saddle Bronco. All of these things come down on turn two or three and have enough power to saddle the Bronco. You are playing two Preacher in here, which doesn't have the power to do it, but Preacher is such a good card, right? <laughs> Same thing with um, Shieldred. This can saddle it, but it's just a great card. Tranquil Frillbrack can saddle it. It's pre-boarded as well, if you want to make that argument, and it's awesome. That's <laughs> in this deck. Also note the three uh, pre-boarded Duresses in this main deck. So two Golgari decks over the weekend that did well. This one, I believe, um, fifth place. Yeah, the first one we looked at, third place standard challenge. This one, fifth place standard challenge. So both top eight Golgari Golgari decks, both of them main decking some number of duress, over one copy, by the way. So, really, really neat, man. I'm not going to look at this one for too long, because it's kind of standard Golgari. Again, you switch out the Deep Cavern Bat, and you put in Caustic Bronco, and just kind of go from there, you know? But I like that even if you're, like, taking damage or losing life to your own Bronco, it's, not, it's never going to be that much. You're not, you know, counting on a wacky combo that needs a couple of bad cards to make it work or whatever. No, you're not doing that. You're just playing fair magic. If you can saddle it up and deal damage to your opponent, that's great. If you have to take a couple of damage, that's probably fine, too. So a really neat build here, and I like what the Golgari mages are bringing to the table this weekend, but let's get back to Gruul one more time for the final deck I want to look at. And this is where it starts to get serious, because this took second place overall at the Star City Games convention in Richmond. Um, they had a regional championship qualifier up there, so again, relatively big event. Congrats to Stanley Hartman. Went 5-1 and one with their Gruul build, and it looks pretty sweet. We've seen builds like this a good portion of the season, so it's not like they're brand new, but top eighting a big time event is a relatively new thing for this deck or really a brand new thing for this deck and in just a second i'll show you why i actually think gruel had the best weekend it's had in years but for now let's take a look at stanley's build now this is mostly a slick shot show off deck we've all been trying to figure out the best way to play this card is it mono red blue red blue white green red and again Without spoiling too much, I think that Green Red is starting to sort of show its dominance in terms of what are the best builds with show off, right? This one plays four copies of Questing Druid, a really, really good shell for a card like this, but it's also got a couple of prowess threats like Monastery Swift Spear and Fugitive Codebreaker. We know what these are by now. Plays Demonic Ruckus in here as a four of, brand new card too, out of Outlaws, just like Slickshot, but we're seeing this show up in a lot of Slickshot builds, and it's doing a lot of work on Arena, it's good to see it transferring over into, you know, paper tournaments. It's also four Kumana Faces Kakazan, and then some of the stuff you might expect, right, four copies of Monsters Rage, 
for Play With Fire, along with a Shock for Witch Stalker Frenzy. No lightning strikes in this deck, just Shock variants and the thing that kills five toughness creatures, Sheldreds and stuff. But there's also three copies of Twin Twinferno, in case you haven't seen the thing you like monstrous rage your uh your um slick shot and then twin inferno to give your double shot your double shot and that's funny your slick shot double strike and then you just win the game almost no matter what your opponent's at 100 you probably still win the game it doesn't matter i haven't checked but probably still a really really sweet deck with sort of these otks in it that still can kind of just play like a hard line like mono red sort of aggro deck right um in terms of being gruel this deck plays questing druid and that is about it in terms of the green stuff we see more green stuff in the board there's a pick your poison as a three of in here so that makes plenty of sense um once you get to the board but there's also restless ridgeline in here is kind of a creature land that's important we're not playing you know like a mono red deck we normally play foundry we're not doing that so kind of a mono red deck that has some green options available to it. Mostly also leaning on twin Inferno combo. Remember that that's in the deck. Now, with that in mind, let's skip. Let's we'll see what got third place. I told you Stanley got second place with Gruel Aggro. Well, Azim Lions also brought their Gruel Aggro build to the table, and they ended up with third place overall. So again, ridiculous weekend, at least at the regional championship qualifier for gruel mages right and the, what i want to point out about this deck is how different it is from the last gruel deck we just looked at it's got some of the same stuff you know monastery swift spear is in here slick shot show off is in here you might expect that we're down to two questing druid from four there's also four kimono faces kakazan and four monstrous rage that is where the similarities stop every single other card in the deck is different from the last build there's two copies of snakeskin veil so again there's more green spells actual green spells in this deck which i like there's also four copies of giant growth more actual green spells in this deck no twin inferno which i do think the deck wants a twin inferno combo of some kind um to be honest i think it's probably the better way to do this thing but it's really nice to see giant growth in a deck in 2024 it makes me feel like it's 1995 again there's nothing wrong with that ancestral anger is in this build so again this one's kind of the more all-in i'm gonna play swift spear on one or you know and or slick shot on two and then turn three i'm gonna kill you with like three pump spells you know um, there's also Audacity, though. This one's not playing Demonic Ruckus. They're playing Audacity instead. So, again, leaning a lot more on the green spells in this deck and not playing so many sort of mono-red things, you know. But we're also playing Cacophony Scamp in this deck as a four of. And if you didn't notice it, the first deck didn't play Scamp at all. It's a card you often see on Arena. And honestly, I can kind of get down with the deck not playing it. I don't think this card is very impressive, but... You know, third place might prove me wrong, but there's also Picnic Ruiner, which you may also notice the first deck didn't play either. And this is sort of the hallmark card for Gruel Aggro on Arena. So this is sort of the more Arena-ish version of the deck, if you don't mind me saying. But, you know, you could say that first deck we looked at is better because it got second place. But there's really a very marginal difference a lot of the time uh, between second and third place. So... Any given Sunday, either one of these could have gotten first place in this tournament, right? It just kind of depends on luck of the draw, especially with a deck like this. It's looking to OTK and for your opponent to not have the removal and stuff like that. So really, really interesting weekend for Gruul specifically. Again, let's go back to um, Stanley's build to kind of close things out here. Um, if you are looking to play, I, th I think this is a deck that's mostly a best of one deck, but maybe we figured out how to board. That's, ah, I should have told you that. Um... Maybe we figured out how to board. Note that Azim's board is, you know, a bunch of one and two ofs, right? You know, Tammy is safekeeping, Tyvar stand, more ways to protect your guys. We got to play with fire in here. Um, there's really no removal in the main deck of Azim's of Azeem, build. That's really interesting. But of course, we got in the festivities, Lithomantic Barrage, Scorching Shot, Play with Fire, Strangle, these removal spells in the board from when we get to those important matchups. But when it comes to Pick Your Poison and Case of the Crimson Pulse, these are actually, I believe, just about the only cards that are more or less the same 
in Stanley's sideboard and Azim's sideboard. You have Case right there. I believe um, Azim's playing a couple of In the Festivities. Stanley's playing three whole copies. There's the Pick Your Poison. One copy of Strangle in Azim's build. Three in Stanley's. And, of course, Furnace Punisher, which does not show up at all in Azim's um, sideboard whatsoever. But it's worth uh, three slots in, in Stanley's. So I think what I really want to stress here is the number of different ways this deck is built and how these two decks aren't necessarily the same deck. They're both labeled Gruel Aggro. And they're both Slickshot builds, but they take kind of dramatically different ways of getting to turn three wins, even if the off-ramp is still a turn three win. So all I really want to stress again is how many ways there are of building this deck and how dangerous it is and how a best of one deck on MTG Arena can sometimes be ported over to best of three with some real results. That's basically all I got for this week, guys. It really feels good to see two Gruel Aggro lists that we've just never seen before in like best of three tournament magic on this level. Surrounded by Boris Convoke, Boris Convoke, Esper Midrange, Legends, Legends, Midrange, Esper Midrange. You know, all these decks that we know were previously established. And you look at the Montreal regionals, things are a little more depressing. Azorius Control, Esper Midrange, Demir Control, Esper Midrange, two decks we don't know about for some reason. Bant Toxic, Simic Artifacts, so some janky stuff that you don't see every day. Making it into the top eight of regionals, and I guess that is sort of heartwarming at the end of the day, but you know, the same menaces are still here. We figured after Pro Tour, we'd see a lot of people on Azorius Control and Domain Ramp, the two decks in the finals, and even, you know, Esper, just because it was such a large part of the playing field at the Pro Tour that a lot of people might just take the lesson play Esper. It's the one the most pros trust, right? So, and we have, I don't know if y'all been playing as much arena as me this week, but I have seen all the decks from the Pro Tour in higher numbers than um, I had been seeing them recently. So, you know, with that in mind, we knew that we were going to see a lot of control decks, Esper mid-range decks, and domain stuff, right, this week. So it's good to see a couple of people again fighting the good bite the, the good bite fight i'm hungry fighting the good fight <laughs> coming out here with not necessarily jank in every case but at least stuff that doesn't necessarily fit the mold of what we've been seeing in standard this season so far again god bless you out there you're doing god's work and god speed to you but anyway jank brewers and fellow wizards that's all i've got for you this week <laughs> Just do all the YouTube stuff on your way out. Like the video, do the thing, subscribe to the sandwich. I need more subs from a sandwich. And of course, you can also check out the Patreon, dollar a month to vote on stuff. New Patreon poll going up today, technically, because it's like three in the morning, but it'll be up at like 7 p.m. the same day I'm recording this. Either way, love you guys. Just let me know in the comments section all the stuff, you know, however you felt about these three decks. And if you got any hotness I didn't cover from over the weekend, Hit me with a link or something. You know, I like to talk about decks. So either way, love you guys, and I will catch you cats later. I'm Deb from The Place. Thanks for watching, Wizards. Spread love and be kind.